These are the new X-Real ones. And if you can work out what I'm playing right now based on the music you can hear in the background, bonus points to you, because it is, of course, Command & Conquer Remastered on the Steam Deck. Oh, that music is iconic, but we're here to talk about the X-Real ones, because I've been using X-Reels for years now. We had the Airs, the Air 2, the Air 2 Pros, even going back to the N-Reels before they changed their name a few years ago. But here we are with the new ones. So the X-Real ones are their latest generation of AR glasses. Well, they call it AR. In my mind, it's not really augmented reality. You're not interacting with the world around you. There's nothing sort of coming up on screen that's augmented. Really what it is, is just a big virtual monitor in front of your eyes. It's kind of like sticking a screen about this size, about that far away from your face. And then this can be your phone or your laptop, your games console. It's an external monitor for your eyes. Although it may become more augmented over time. They did dabble with this uh, with the Air 2 Ultra, which was kind of meant more for developers and also a lot more expensive. But this will also eventually support a modular plug-in camera. So kind of turning it into like meta Ray-Bans. And they've also said we're going to see some LLMs, some large language model AIs incorporated into this. So down the road, we may see some actual augmented reality out of these. But in the meantime, they're essentially just a big cinema screen for your face. And all you do is plug in your games console, whether it's your Steam Deck, your ROG Ally, or your PS5 or whatever, your uh, mobile phone or your PC, as long as it supports USB-C and display out, and then you've got it mirrored or extended right in front of your eyes. So now I'm looking at a equivalent to a 147 inch at a four meter distance uh, OLED display right in front of my eyes. And because we have this transparency mode, this electrochromic dimming, which used to be exclusive to the Air 2 Pro model, but now we have it on the x real One, with a press, you can block out pretty much all the light in front of you. So you've got a really crisp, smooth, big, bright screen in front of you. These are epic. But what exactly is new with these X-Real ones? Well, I'd say there's eight key upgrades. Number one, the fact that we have a new chip, their first custom in-house built X1 chip, which unlocks a whole bunch of features, which we'll come to in a second. Number two, we also have brighter screens. Last year, it peaked at 500 nits of perceived brightness. Now we've got 600 nits on the X-Real ones and actually 700 on the upcoming X-Real one Pros. Number three, as I say, we've got that wider field of view, now 50 degrees up from 46, although the X-Real one Pro coming in a few months will actually boost that up to 56 seven degrees. Number four, we have that electrochromic dimming, which previously, as I say, was exclusive to the Pro models, so you don't need to pop on a fiddly plastic light block anymore. We also now have the anchor mode built into the glasses. Previously, you'd have to have the X-Beam accessory plugged into it, but because of that new X1 chip, it's built into the glasses. So you've got the three modes. Follow. And as I give you a bit of a visual representation of this, because it's extremely hard to film through the glasses and you can't record from the glasses, follow mode basically keeps the image directly in front of my eyes, wherever I'm looking. But if I then switch to anchor mode, it then pins that screen, that image, in that same space within my 3D world. So I can move around, I can look around, and then come back to it, and it remains there. Why might you want that? Well, let's say you've got your laptop screen in front of you, and then you could have your extended screen on top or off to one side. Or if you're gaming and you want to plant the screen like a TV would be on your wall or something in one particular location. And this is the first time we can do this through the glasses themselves with the X1 chip, because previously you need the separate X-Beam accessory to give you this, what they call 3DOF, 3DOF or Dimensions of Freedom. And then finally, number three, we have side view, where you can basically shrink down your screen and then that's sort of great for navigation if you want to follow Google Maps, but you can still see your surroundings in front of you. So follow, anchor, which is new for these, built in, and side view. They've refined the design with a new spring hinge so it doesn't pinch or put as much pressure on your head. They've also made the frame a little bit sleeker, although it is a touch heavier at 84 grams, up from 72 on last year's Air 2. And of course, that's without the USB-C cable, which comes bundled. One side plugs into the back of the glasses on the left side, the other into your device. So this is essentially what you have on your face, which is a whole lot lighter and more comfortable than a Meta Quest or an Apple Vision Pro. They've also added an extra button on the frame, along with much improved speakers. They've actually collaborated with Bose to improve the audio. And there's also a new, very convenient in-glasses menu for adjusting the screen size and distance. You can customize button shortcuts, there's tutorials, audio settings, and a whole bunch more. I'm actually going to cheat a little bit because I've got my laptop here, my MacBook. I'm plugging in to the USB-C port, and it's immediately mirrored 
to my eyes. I'm not sure if you can see the difference when I go between the transparency mode, so I can now see you, uh, and then turn on the full electrochromic dimming. There's actually three levels of the dimming you can switch between, but most of the time I like it blacked out as much as possible. So I can actually do a super saf, who of course always wears his glasses, and read the script, but also look at you in the camera, and you wouldn't know. But to my eyes at least, no pun intended, this is actually a really big upgrade. The wider field of view, the electrochromic dimming, not just on the Pro model, and what that X1 chip allows. Essentially, it's incorporating the X beam, which gives you the anchor mode, which I can switch between anchor and follow just with a single press of this red button. I can also double press it to bring up this new menu, which is actually very helpful. But of course, you are still limited to one display. Yes, you can have an ultra wide, and if you're plugging into your laptop, you can have multiple tabs and windows open within your you know, mirrored or extended screen, but it's still one display in front of you. That's still a 50 degree field of view. I say still, that's often 46, but you're still looking at, you know, a frame of about that in front of your eyes. And you can change the size of your virtual screen down to about 32 inches or all the way up to over 400 inches. Although at a certain point over about 140 inches, the field of view becomes a limitation and essentially you're just zooming in on the screen, but you'll then need to turn your head to actually see the edges of the screen. And I'm also pleased to report, because they've improved the optics engine and also with this new X1 chip, even coming from the Air 2 Pros, everything looks crisper, everything feels smoother, and they've drastically improved the response time, or more specifically, the motion to photon latency, or the M2P, from 20 milliseconds down to just 3 milliseconds. Honestly, the stabilization, the clarity of these x real ones fantastic. And they're the first pair of quote-unquote AR glasses to receive a five-star eye comfort certification, so I can comfortably watch a movie or edit my videos with really no eye strain. I am someone who gets a little bit motion sick using VR and AR glasses, but I've never had an issue with these. Even taking them on planes and bumpy trains, I'm happy to edit and work and watch movies on this, and I've never had an issue with feeling nauseous or motion sick. And because it is obviously powered by the device you're plugging into, it doesn't run out of battery. Now, of course, the device may run out of battery, but the flip side of that is, let's say I'm on a plane, one of the places I use this all the time, I can actually dim my screen right down, save a whole bunch of battery there, and because my 16-inch MacBook rarely fits on a tray table, on a plane or a train, I can also, you know, dip it down, have the screen dimmed, and then kind of use it like a Vision Pro, and work this way with my big virtual screen. So in the box, you have this little uh, glasses case for the X-Reels, which pop in there nicely, a uh, lens cloth. You've also got this USB-C cable, and essentially, if you wrap that around there, that's all you need. Just take that with you everywhere you go, and you're set. It also comes with lens frame inserts, if you want to put your prescription lens in there, which actually I might do, because I find my eyesight has been uh, getting a little bit worse over the last couple of years, so I might actually do that. And also, while these are, for me, very comfortable out of the box, you can also switch out these nose pads, and there are two other sizes in the box. Plus, they also flex quite nicely, so you can uh, pop them on your face, just maybe push up a little bit, depending on your nose. I've got quite a big nose. And like before, these, uh, what are they called? Handles? These are the frames. What, what are these called? Anyway, these things have three levels of adjustment. Still a bit of a horrible cracking sound there, but you can adjust how the frames, how the lenses sit on your face. One thing that hasn't really changed though is glare. I'm actually, as I'm looking at you now, still getting a nice white reflection of this table underneath. So depending on what sort of down here, I am seeing that kind of glaring into the bottom of the frames, which can be a bit distracting. And as good as the electrochromic dimming is, which of course needs to be plugged in to activate, it's still a pair of sunglasses. So all this light is still gonna be coming into your eyes, so you're not getting a, like, a fully immersive, blacked out Vision Pro experience, unless you put a bag over your head or something. But for a pair of glasses, works really well, and it is comfortable. So that's just a bit of a first look at the new X Real Ones. This isn't a full review because actually this is running pre-release software. There will be a day one update if you buy one of these and I'll revisit it then. Although I might also wait for the X Real One Pros, which are, uh, I'm told, coming out Q1 2025. Uh, and as I say, come with a brighter screen, wider field of view, which I'm excited about. But still, these X Real Ones, very nice upgrade over the Air 2s and even the Air 2 Pros, to be honest. I love the fact we don't have to mess around with the X Beam anymore. And if you do just want a pair of essentially chunky sunglasses that give you an incredible cinematic screen in front of you for your phone, your laptop, your games console, whatever it may be, you can't go wrong with a pair of X Reels. The downside, there is a downside, these are more expensive, a fair bit more expensive than last year, starting uh, at 499, I think that's the same in pounds and dollars for these extra ones, and I think it's gonna be 599 for the extra one Pro, so 100 more for that, which I think is about 100, 150 more 
than the Air 2 and the Air 2 Pros were. But what do you reckon? Could you see yourself rocking a pair of these with a nice big screen in front of your face? Let me know what you make of the extra ones and if you'd be tempted to pick one up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, a cheeky like and subscribe would be fantastic. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.